look at the fish. They still have pet stores here, yeah. Hi, my name is Phoenix and this is TFL Design and today I'm doing part three of my Japan trip for 2024 and basically where we last left off I was on my way to one of my favorite if not my favorite city in all of Japan and that is Kobe. Now my next onsen hotel takes place in Arima Hotel which is a city that has nothing but onsens in it so before we head there we thought we'd stop by Kobe first so I'd have at least, well, I wouldn't say half a day, but like, you know, at least four or five hours to sort of shop around and look at stores that I'd missed out on the last time I was here in Kobe. What usually happens is we usually come here for food and just leave. And I realize that, hey, there's actually like a lot of shopping potential here. And as you can see right here, I'm visiting the Comme des Garçons store, which is actually a Japanese brand and one of the brands I was going to be on a lookout for to find a very special piece to splurge money on basically. And I did try on a few things. As you can see, this pair of pants I really wanted to love. It's got that like Japanese vibe, but I felt it was a bit too thick and it was made out of polyester so that meant I wouldn't be able to wear it in any other season other than during the winter. Because as I've said, my entire trip in Japan was extremely hot and sweaty and trying on all these winter clothes was just awful. I did like in Japan how you would had to take off your shoes in the fitting room to try out the clothing so that it doesn't dirty the bottom of pants and things like that. They also gave you this like really thin sheet to put over your face to protect the clothing from makeup and stuff I guess from girls and it worked for sweat too I guess. If you want to find out what I actually ended up buying, be sure to check out my future video on my haul. Before we shop some more, we decided to stop for some food. And being in Kobe, my husband definitely wanted something with Kobe beef, of course. So we stopped by a place that we found randomly that had sort of like a beef on top of rice, which was something he really enjoyed the last time we were in Kobe. And we found this place called Red Rock, which is apparently a chain, but the food was so good and the atmosphere was so chill that we ended up coming here twice. We'd be visiting this place specifically again just for the same menu item. And what's amazing about this was that the price wasn't even that much. It was only 3,500 yen which is like under 35 USD. After eating we went out to continue my shopping spree as I wanted to see as much of Kobe as I could and shop around the places that I didn't have the chance to the last time. We finally found the place where I had been dreaming about for years now and it was here at Kobe Motomachi where honestly, the last time I was here, right after all the restrictions were lifted, it was super empty. And I guess I fantasized about a lot of the thrifting opportunities in this place specifically. Now coming back here, I did see a lot of these sort of vintage looking stores, as you can see here. They definitely had a collection of cool, vintage, very thrifted type of feel clothing, which if you're into this type of style could be like really cool to look at. But unfortunately, what I'd realized was that after finding a few consecutive stores of the same product, I realized that all this stuff isn't really secondhand or vintage per se. They probably all bought their stock from the same places and just came off as like a vintage type of deal. So I was disappointed in that. In my head, I had, you know, fantasized a lot more in the years that, you know, I waited to come back here. But Kobe does have a very good secondhand thrifting scene. It's just that I wouldn't be going to them at this time. Now, as it got later in the day, we had to check into our hotel soon. So I had to say goodbye to Kobe for a little bit. Don't worry, we'd be coming back. But on our way to Arima Hotel, we'd have to take a cab and then a train to get there. I'd be returning back to Kobe at the end of my trip as this was the last city we'd be staying in before we left for the airport. But for the next two nights, we'd be spending our time in Arima Onsen, which is a city, once again, with just onsens and nothing else. On our way there, I found some pretty interesting vending machines.
As we got to Arima City, I marveled at the fact that LED seatbelts were a thing and I was wondering why that wasn't a bigger thing for the rest of the world as well. It made so much sense as it's so hard to find your seatbelt at night and having this light just made it so much easier for me to put it on. Now the thing with Arima is that it sort of goes up and down. There's a lot of hills. And by this time in the trip, we really didn't want to walk the 15 minute uphill. So we decided to take a taxi instead. And it was so much better in the AC taxi than it was sweating outside going uphill. Now we had sent our luggage like three days ago from our last hotels to this location already. So we weren't carrying the largest ones. But from here on out, we would be moving with our full luggage from place to place. As the Arima Onsen Hotel wouldn't have been able to send it out in time to reach our next hotel. By the time we got there, we were told our luggage was already upstairs waiting in our suite and we were led straight to it. We noted that there were massage services and they actually have like a spa area and stuff like that. So we'd asked if we could make an appointment to have one of those sessions. Since the both of us really wanted to relax and this vacation was all about relaxing. Other than sweating and shopping, we did nothing but sit in onsens all trip. And it was worth it. As we were led in, I was reminded about the last time I was here. Now I never stayed a full night because this place is truly expensive. It's like basically a thousand dollars Canadian a night, which is a lot. But when you see the full services that they do, you kind of understand why. The last time I was here, it was just a day trip to use the onsens. Not in this hotel specifically, but it's sister hotel. But the look was very much the same. It had the same old fashioned look and everything. And as you can see from our room, there is no bed. This entire area was not only serving as our living room, dining room, but it would also serve as our bedroom later on as someone would come in to move the tables, fix our beds, and each morning, the people would come back in to move the beds and put back the table for breakfast and stuff. It was kind of crazy. I'll talk more about that later. But as you can see here in this little preview, this was why we came for the personal baths that they had in your suite. This is the onsen water coming straight from the mountains. And even though there was one in your suite, you could also use the public one as well, which we did of course. They had special baths with different minerals in them as well. When you went to the public one that was on a different floor from the floor that we were on. Now, after we cleaned up and showered, they got ready for us to have dinner. And once again, that meant they had to come in, literally take off everything that was on the table. And I apologize for the fact that the background is just our messy luggage and random things we'd bought throughout the days. And each time it was the same thing. The setup was, I would say, really awkward for someone that's an introvert. It was kind of weird having to just sit there and stare and wait for this lady to sort of move the table by herself, by the way. So I was always feeling bad and wanting to help her, but I know that's her job and they would never expect you to help or want you to help. But basically each time they came in, they would bow and each time they left, they would bow and announce themselves every time they came back in. And this would happen over and over for at least 20 times per session if you're having dinner, as each new dish they brought in had them coming in and out, in and out constantly. And so they would have to announce themselves, bow, and then start serving. Kind of weird for me at first, but I kind of just got used to it and just bowed a million times back myself. I guess by now you've figured out why the price tag is so high for a place like this. If you ask if I'd ever do this again, probably not unless I win the lotto or something because this is definitely a once in a lifetime thing for me and my husband. I wasn't the one that picked this place out. It was my husband that decided he wanted an in-suite onsen and this was the only one located in this area and it just happened to be that expensive. Probably because it was one of the last areas available since this place is pretty popular and Japan at this moment is pretty packed with tourists. But yeah, while the price tag is super high and this is definitely a once in a lifetime thing. Oh, by the way, I thought these little packets that heat up after you pour water in them was pretty cool. 
I think this technology is used in some MREs or something, right? I think I've seen them in videos before where you just pour water in and just wait for it to cook your meals. I'd say the food here was pretty traditional. I really enjoyed the beef, usually of course, because Kobe beef is just awesome. I was more amused about the fact that our suite would smell like amazing food throughout the days as there were no ventilation, as you can see from the ceiling above, and all of the smell of the beef would probably be just soaking into the walls and my clothes, and I'm okay with that. Did you enjoy that ASMR of the food sizzling? It was really cozy to wear yukatas after a shower and onsen soak to just have dinner in your room. It was a little weird at first to have someone come in constantly and serve you and move everything for you and you just sit there and do nothing. But I kind of got used to it and honestly, I understand why this costs so much now. I just hope they get paid well. Now, shortly after dinner service was over, they clean up everything and then they have to come in and set up the futons for you. So the futons are located inside a closet in the room and they have to like move the table out of the way, place down the futons, put the covers over the futons and all of the bedding that you will be using. In the morning, you could better see the view that we had. Like I said, this is a mountainside and it was just gorgeous in the morning. and the onsen water just constantly running in the tub in our own bathroom was just amazing. Obviously, we had a little soak in the morning as well. The thing I found funny with them having to constantly come in and out and make your breakfast and make your bed and everything is the fact that even though you chose when you wanted your breakfast to start, given a certain time slots like 7 a.m., 8 a.m., etc., they always had to arrive 15 minutes early, so you had to wake up pretty early to, you know, get yourself presentable, I hope. And they would have to, like, take away your bed and put it back in the closets and everything. And I found that kind of funny because I was like, what if I just want to sleep some more? What if I want to sleep till noon? I mean, I guess I could ask them to take it out again, but that would just make me feel bad and it just seems lazy. And even though we spent almost the entire day in this onsen hotel on this day, I didn't want to spend that much time sleeping. After breakfast, we had plans to just sort of hang out and stare outside for a little bit before maybe heading down to the lower parts of this hill to see a little bit part of the city where there are merchants and little shops that sell little things. The city is really small and I've walked through it a few times in the past before. And every time we came here, we always ended up in someone's house. N not in someone's house, basically in their backyard because we'd be just wandering and staring at places and just end up at their back doorstep for some reason. Because the stairs go up and down the hills, you just keep following it and then you just end up losing your place and ending up in someone's home. Kind of weird. And we're not the only ones. We had a little bit of dessert and these amazing chips, which honestly, I wish there was a place I could buy them here in the West because they were so good and tasted kind of healthy, I guess. Then we had lunch because once again, the only meal not served to you in these onsen hotels are lunch and found a cute little place and had some lunch and dessert as well again. After that, we headed back to a hotel for another bath and onsen dip, of course. And then we were scheduled for our massage in the spa area. Now I was out like a light sleeping. I may have even snored, who knows, during the massage. But when I woke up, I was served a nice drink and a cool towel that looked like cake. Then it was dinner time again. And this time we had a very familiar service that I was actually used to, which is someone personally helping you cook the sukiyaki meal. Every time I come to Kobe, I'm always there for a sukiyaki meal. It's where I discovered it many years ago. And so having this in my room was sort of amazing. And once again, I was just like, I can't believe I'm having a sukiyaki meal right on top of the area I'm going to be sleeping in a few hours. 
The service here is amazing. They're super polite. And I just felt bad almost the entire time just going, I wish I could help you. Should I help you? I feel like I should be helping you. Once again, sort of a nightmare for an introvert. But I just kept smiling, saying thank you and bowing over and over again. That meal was very tasty, and despite most of the meals in the onsen places being very traditional, I would say the meat never disappoints, as it's always very good quality, and who doesn't like Kobe beef? And after two nights here, it was finally time to say goodbye. In the morning, we had our breakfast, after being woken up, having the beds being pulled away and placed in the closet, and having the table set up again. I had enjoyed the two nights I had at Arima Onsen, and although I can safely say I'll probably never do full nights here again, given the amount it cost, it was worth the money for the two days I had here. Well, that's it for this video, but in my next video, I'm going to be staying at another Onsen hotel in my favorite city, Kobe City. Be sure to tune in for the next one as I conclude my Japan trip from 2024. Bye-bye now.